end. So now we will try to speak about some tips and tricks. How do you troubleshoot them? So the systemic approach is of course trying to determine the system of source of problem, who is the patient, in which lead is it, and the pacemaker. And of course, you should never forget your patient as well. Trying to underline the rhythm, electrolyte imbalance, drug therapy, or even acid site, or the last but not the least, the lead site. So, for example, in the atrium or the ventricle, how do you evaluate the lead? Is it a epicardial, endocardial, acute or chronic, and where is it? So, is it in the chamber? It should be. Otherwise, is it connected well enough? So, as I had already said, sometimes you may have to evaluate the pacemaker. Try to figure it about the So what will you try to see for? So for example, sometimes when you see the ECG carefully, you may notice there's failure to pace. So how do you notice it is? You will not be seeing any apparent spike on the ECG. And the heart rate is going to be lesser than the lower limit. So you may see is the junctional or ventricular junctional beat. So the possible causes for this can be lead fracture, loose connection, or even if the cable is not fully inserted. So for the, if you have a pacemaker, you will try to see for the battery failure or output program to, is too low. So if there is a patient with a failure, you may land up in a trouble like is if you are not able to see any pacing spikes. So what do you do? You must always check for the patient's safety first. For example, call up your doctor. Only if needed, apply your external pacer if needed. And then yes, if there is demand of too much problems, if you may notice, you have to be careful with the external pacer, atropin or the increased output. Same way you have to check for the connections, replace a temporary battery always. Huh? You need to maybe sometimes even change the box or the cables. So what are the reasons for failing to capture? It may happen due to the signs and symptoms like outward spike is not followed by depolarization. Okay, so now coming to the lead problems. So if the lead is having dislodgement or fracture, that can also cause failure to capture. So a pacemaker, even after insertion, so when you are when you are noticing there is failure to contract, you should get it check for the polarity with the pacemaker. If you are somewhere alone and you notice that there is failure to capture, what do you do? Of course, you will try to increase the output to the higher level. Similarly, you will try to determine cause threshold or program safety programs and also you should never forget to check for the battery status the polarity or the proper chamber is there as well and sa same way check and tighten the cables and connections so that's a private feature of one of the pacemakers what is called as auto capture it tends to automatically adjust the output of the patient with the other patient as well. So what do you notice over here? So, and this is there is loss of capture, but it is associated with. So what do you notice over here? So 
there are a few things, there are a few complex things which you are able to know. There is capture, of course, there is loss of capture and sometimes also backup safety pulse as well which is coming into play. So what do you notice over here? Anyone would like to try? So what do you notice? So what you notice over here is failure to sense or there is under sensing over pacing. So what do you, how do you diagnose? You will be seeing pacing stimuli which is coming too early that does not even sense intrinsic rhythm and the patient will be having problems with palpitations. So that is why these phenomenons are very, very important and you have to be really careful. So you need to also know about the causes for under sensing, okay. So for example, it can be causes associated with the patient, even with the lead as well. So these are some of the causes, frequent causes you all should try to be careful. So whenever, if there is under sensing, what are you going to do? You will be checking is the sensitivity settings, right? And then you have to also recheck the sensing threshold as well. And you should reposition the leads and evaluate how are the refractory periods and change the battery. Yes, if there is a lot of problem, you have to change the battery. There is no solution other than that. Similarly, if there is over sensing or under sensing, so what are the problems? What are the problems with which they are going to present to you? So they will be pacing at rates lower than the program rate. Similarly, there will be erratic prolongation of pacing interval. Similarly, if you come across persistent oversensing, which may reappear, which may reappear. So that's why then again you have to be careful. So for example, what is happening over here? This is a beautiful example of the oversensing over here. Another example, one more example. So oversensing is you are extra sensing, which you are not supposed to sense. So myopotentials, electromagnetic interference, similarly for the pacemaker as well, you did not program it well, phenomenon of crosstalk. So if there is this problem is happening, you should check for the connections, adjust the blanking periods. Similarly, during the diaphragmatic or chest wall stimulation, hiccups may happen, which may be intermittent. So the possible lead a lot of times is due to the leads myocardial perforation or lead fracture or even sometimes due to the insulation break. So the pacemaker may be associated with the high output. So you try to reduce the output to maintain the capture, okay. Of course, if possible, try to see which lead is the culprit, the A or the V and accordingly you will be able to take care. If it is fractured, of course, you will change the lead. Similarly, on a temporary basis, you can always reduce the rate till the permanent pacemaker of fibrillation is arranged. Okay, so I think a lot of people are already aware of what is called as pacemaker mediated tachycardia. So mostly seen in dual chamber tracking modes in which the P tracking pacing is at or near the upper rate limit. Patient may have palpitations or even the hypotension as well. It is happening due to the loss of atrial capture or a PVC. Similarly, the retrograde conduction of the impulse causes atrial depolarization, right? So why I have tried to insert so many figures is it will be easier for you all to learn it whenever you are 
trying to go through all these textbooks and all. So if there is pacemaker tachycardia, immediately apply a magnet. Okay. But yes, you must not forget, even the magnet, they themselves can cause all these problems. So, since we are approaching towards the end of the session, so what else is left? Anything happens, always put it in papers. Document, document, and document. Okay, so that's really, really important. Never forget that. And whatever you do and all, 